In this video, we're going to start uh, to learn the different type of details that we have for the walls. So then we can create the conditions needed to estimate the number of studs, the number of uh, plywood sheets that we need in order to finish the interior walls. So let's start by uh, zooming in the uh, north area of the building. We're going to take do our takeoff on this uh, area. We would like to create a linear condition for each type of width that we need uh, for the interior walls. And also we will create a count condition for the different type of widths that we need in order to count the corners, internal intersections, openings that will require additional uh, studs. So let's start by looking at the uh, different walls, the different finishes. We see that we have uh, exterior walls and then uh, interior walls that have uh, drywall or wet wall depending on the uh, requirements. Also we see that uh, some of these walls uh, will have uh, a requirement for piping going through like uh, behind the sink, behind the uh, toilet, behind the uh, showers but some of them will not need that like this uh, women's locker room where behind the uh, lockers there is no need for piping going through so the, the width of the studs required for the restroom here will be different from the ones required in the locker room. So we need to know what uh, different types we have uh, in order to create uh, the conditions that will then be used to estimate the uh, walls. The details are all listed in uh, sections 8, uh, so drawings 8, 1 uh, and on will provide us with all the details for the walls. Let's uh, start by looking at 8.1. Uh, so we see here this is an exterior wall. It has uh, on the outside brick veneer and on the inside it has a gypsum board mounted on uh, one inch metal furring separated at 18 inches on center. So we see that this is a, just a one inch thick uh, um, metal furring that goes uh, along the wall and uh, separated at every uh, 16 inches on center. So we do not need a bottom channel and a top channel to support interior studs. Um, so that's one difference. Then uh, this is another uh, exterior interior wall, same uh, kind of uh, arrangement. Here we have a exterior interior door a wall that has different finish. Here the exterior finish is uh, stucco and the interior is just the wall exposed. Um, <clears throat> here we have a detail of uh, interior interior wall that has a, a uh, 8 inch concrete block inside. So this one has a, a 1 inch also uh, metal furring at 16 inches uh, covered with the 5 8 uh, gypsum uh, board. This uh, wall here, this one has a, a different arrangement. Now this has on the exterior, it has the uh, brick veneer and then on the interior, now this is mounted on uh, uh, the, the drywall it's mounted on three 5 eighths metal furring at 16 inches on center. So we have now a, a different thickness here and this also has uh, insulation. So this uh, goes to a very likely a, a, a restroom in here, a toilet. So in order to accommodate uh, sound um, insulation we have this uh, thicker uh, wall. This detail shows an interior and exterior wall. The interior wall is exposed and the exterior wall has a uh, brick veneer. 
So that's uh, what this uh, drawing 8.1 uh, offers. We'll go to drawing 8.2. Then uh, we can see here there is again some more details for the framing. Um, in this uh, top left uh, detail we have the typical stud framing so we see a duct opening and uh, there is some reinforcement around it so we can see here it says uh, we have a uh, 20 gauge studs at uh, two feet on center um, then we have double stock studs for openings uh, that's typical and then we have a top and bottom uh, runners. These are C channels that go on the bottom and on the top of the entire framing to hold the vertical studs. Here we have a uh, typical opening so we have studs, at, uh, additional studs on each side and then we have a, a runner uh, on top of that uh, door so we need to add additional studs. That's why when we estimate the walls we create a linear condition that measures the length of the wall and then we are going to divide that length by the spacing of these uh, studs to estimate the number of studs then we're going to create a count condition to count openings to count uh, corners and intersections so we can add the additional studs that are required for those conditions <clears throat> Here we have a window and we see there is again uh, double uh, studs on the sides and then we have uh, additional uh, runners on the seal and top of this uh, window. Here we see a uh, interior partition detail. This is uh, um, gypsum board uh, mounted on, uh, on studs, metal studs. It does not say uh, what is the uh, width, but we can assume it's if uh, three five eight, uh, on, on this uh, otherwise noted. Um, <clears throat> Here we have a interior uh, corridor pro shop and toilet. So this is now uh, mounted the ceramic tile is mounted on a 5.8 uh, cement board and this is mounted on uh, studs uh, 3, 5, 8 or 6 inch metal studs so what we're going to do is uh, every time that we have a um, a fixture, a plumbing fixture on the wall that has uh, piping behind it we're going to assume that that uh, thickness is going to be 6 inch if we do not have uh, the the plumbing uh, behind the wall, we're going to use uh, three and five eighths for the uh, toilets to accommodate the uh, sound attenuation uh, required. <clears throat> then here we see a interior partition, which is a toilet to toilet. This one has a uh, five eight cement boards on three uh, five eighths or six inch metal studs again we will use three and five eighths if there is no pipe and we will use six inch if there is a piping uh, going through the walls that's going to be our, our criteria to decide the width of the uh, walls here we see a typical intersection so we see in this uh, corner that we have uh, three studs uh, and then the gypsum board mounted uh, uh, on on the studs. We have here a uh, opening that has a, a door, so there is a, a metal stud in here, and then uh, a wood uh, backing, and then the door comes uh, on the other side. These are uh, mounted uh, equipment recessed areas. So that has additional uh, supporting as well. If we go to the next drawing, 823, uh, we see there's some more uh, details in here. Now this uh, ha shows uh, the glasses, uh, exterior walls with um, doors, details for those uh, jams, the doors, details for mounting windows, 
and so on. So this probably does not have too much information uh, that we need. Let's uh, take a look at this detail here. This uh, door with the threshold, doors with thresholds. Here we see a uh, jamb on interior partition that has double metal studs. So this one has uh, double metal studs on that uh, door opening. Then we have uh, eight four more details uh, here for the walls. Uh, the interesting one uh, perhaps is this one here where we have the shower and in the shower there is a, a fall down shower seat. So we see that this wall on that particular area has uh, double studs uh, located at 12 inches on center. So this is a, a, a thicker uh, type of a wall with uh, additional reinforcement to support the weight of uh, a person sitting in this uh, shower uh, seat. Then uh, the rest is uh, details for other areas. Here we have details for glass, for the roof, for exterior uh, uh, walls. Um, again, some more additional details that are not really uh, relevant to the work that we're going to do right now. So that that's uh, the uh, details that we need for, for the walls. These uh, additional details are for um, the exterior walls and other areas that we are not concerned with the uh, wood framing.